I know you are doing some research actually at UC Davis in studying oak trees from other climates. Uh, talk about oak trees for a minute. Yeah. Um, well, so so in California with oaks, I mean, I think what we're what we're looking at with climate change is lots of things are going to be changing. And so in terms of oaks, um, there are places where oaks are now where they may not be able to grow in the future because it'll be perhaps too dry. But then there are other places where say conifers are now where the conifers aren't gonna be able to grow but oaks will actually do better. The other thing that's really fascinating to me about oaks is that they hybridize quite readily. And there are um, many um, documented cases of different um, species growing near each other and hybridizing with each other. And in the case of California, we have these tree oaks. We also have all of these shrubby oaks, what people will call them the scrub oaks, um, that are typically much more drought tolerant species. And if they're closely related, they can actually hybridize with each other. And with that hybridization, you do get this mixing of these characteristics. And so what was really interesting to me going to Joshua Tree a couple of years ago was um, seeing a lot, uh, um, actually a California Valley oak, Quercus lobata, growing at Joshua Tree, but it, it was hybridized with um, the local scrub oak there. Mm -hmm. So that, that ability to hybridize will actually give oaks, um, it makes them more resilient in, with climate change. Well, I, actually that's really fa fascinating. I'd like to maybe call it some specifics because that's um, sound like the future of the oaks we will be seeing in gardens in California. We are looking, as you've said, to drier climates. And I know you've done uh, some research and trials specifically about ones from Texas. Are there ones that you can mention that are uh, might be compatible with with relatively small gardens? I mean, it's one thing to have them at the Shields Grove mm -hmm. trials, but uh, right. I'm a big proponent of, of oaks as a keystone species that, you know, everyone should plant one that could plant one. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, we're all, you know, we have fire concerns and space concerns and all that. Right. But um, can you tell us any about some of your uh, things you're excited about, some new oaks that might really be garden worthy? Yeah, and I guess one thing I, I do want to clarify too, Saxon, is that with um, thinking about the habitat value of oaks, the, the highest habitat value is going to be with our native species. So those are the species that have those tight relationships with our native insects. Um, and so I don't want to present or you know mislead people into thinking, oh, you plant an oak tree from Texas, it has the same habitat value as a California. Yeah, well, I was gonna, actually, I was gonna follow yeah. up on that as far as the whole idea of ecosystem services. So that's definitely mm -hmm. a concern that I hope, we, let's expand on that too. But right. first, Let's, let's talk about some of those oaks that are more, this maybe smaller or more adapted to garden culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, there are a couple species that we've we've already grown for decades in Shields Oak Grove. Um, so one of them that I've just appreciated for a long time is um, the Chisos red oak, and that's Quercus gravesii. And it grows in uh, the Chisos Mountains in Big Bend National Park, as well as some of the um, other kind of mountain ranges in West Texas. They're they're called the some of the Sky Island Mountain Ranges oh, because they're yeah. these mountains that are surrounded by desert, and so they have these species that grow up in the mountains that that need that higher elevation and can't grow in the surrounding deserts. And so they're essentially like these islands in the sky surrounded by desert. That's a great term, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating to me. Um, anyway, so the this Chisos red oak, it, it has um, a smaller stature. So typically like 30 to 40 feet would be kind of its, its typical height. And um, the leaves, it is one of the red oaks. So it has um, deciduous leaves and they have pointy lobes. And the, the leaf is kind of long and narrow. Um, and to me, it's almost a little bit birch-like. You know, the leaves are pendant oh. Oh. and it, it's just a very graceful looking tree to me. So, and it, it's of a scale that feels more like a residential scale. So, um, 
Has that been, you said that's, is that in the Shields Grove and it's been, we could go see it? It's, it's a mature tree, I could go see it? Yeah, there are two of them in Shields Oak Grove. Pacific plant people. Pacific region industry leaders offer advice you can use right now in your own garden. Climate-appropriate plant recommendations in an ecological, naturalistic context.